And I want to tell you something, friends. Anytime we allow our inside to be fed with some of this junk, we are causing some wound inside of us. Remember in the Old Testament, the narrative about the first fall of man in the book of Genesis chapter 3. Even though that story which was written with the best allegorical and if you like story that you can ever think of God communicating the best way well through human instrument that we can know the fall of man and how original sin came into the world even though that story was told in that way we can discern properly what God was communicating to the world it was through one single act of disobedience that a great injury was made in the human nature and we called it what original sin and what was the consequence of original sin the scripture tells us first John chapter 2 verse number 16 gives us the three categories of the covetousness that is concupiscence, which is one of the consequences of original sin. And he says, one is the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. The second is the lust of the eyes. And the third, the pride of life. So in addition to our losing our original righteousness, our original communion with God, so much so that our first parents were taken away from paradise. The human nature became vulnerable to sin. We have this concupiscence, which is the movement of the sensitive appetite towards what God would not want. So much so that St. Paul would say, I want to do the right thing, but I'm pushed to do the wrong thing. That's just because of the consequence of original sin. But there is a good news. The good news is that Jesus died and mandated us to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's why at baptism, we are cleansed from original sin. That's the good news. But the concupiscence continues. Even though we have been cleansed, the concupiscence, which is the, uh, the, the movement of the sensitive appetite that draws you to something negative instead of what God wants, it is still in you. But in itself, it is not sin. It is like temptation to sin. Concupiscence is not sin. But it is the vulnerability to sin. But when you control it, you are not a sinner. You are not radically a sinner as some people teach. But you are a wounded soldier. A wounded but healed soldier. And that's why you have to be very careful not to get some other wounds. That's the strategy of the enemy. To begin to create some other wounds. Through the weakness of the concupiscence. So much so that we begin to use some kind of sharp object. To scratch the old wound of the original sin. Sin is like a sharp object. And the sharpness of this object depends on the nature of the sin. When you are sinning gravely, you are using a very sharp object inside of you in the spiritual realm. But when it is a venial sin, even though it is sin, it is not as sharp <laughs> as grave or mortal sins. That's why we have to be very careful not to hurt this injury again. Not to refresh the old wound. And the best way to do it is to begin to learn the way of Jesus. To begin to guard what we look at. To begin to guard what we see. To begin to guard what we hear, what we eat, what we taste. 